Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is mean absolute deviation or MAD. Okay, in the last lesson we uh, calculated the mean and the median. Remember, it's it's mean to say that you're average, mean equals average, and median is like that median strip that goes down the middle of the freeway, median equals middle right there. Okay, you guys, I know it's springtime probably for you, most of you guys, and some of you guys start getting spring fever and you start checking out. This is not a hard lesson, but if you have spring fever, you're just going to zone in and zone out and just not, not pay attention. And then all of a sudden it becomes hard. So just hang in there. We're almost done. You can do this, you guys. All right. So here we go. Let's get started here. So here's our common course strand for our, our teachers here. We're going to summarize some number data sets in relations to their context. And then, um, uh, <clears throat> so how can we determine and use mean absolute deviation or MAD? of a set of data points, okay? So understanding the mean absolute deviation, okay? So the measure of variability is, um, it, t it talks about, you know, if you have a set of data, how much do the numbers vary, okay? So do they, are they very closely uh, together with each other? Then the, uh, the measure of variability would be smaller. If, um, if your measure of variability is a large number, then the numbers are very, very uh, large. So so anyway, so it can be also called the measure of the spread. So And so what we're going to do is do the mean absolute deviation, which is the mean of the distances between the data values and the mean of the data. And you're thinking, what? There's a lot of words of mean in there. Well, we're going to be calculating averages a lot. So let's go ahead and add, uh, the data set represents the heights in feet of various buildings, so probably in cities and stuff. So city A, I'm supposing. <clears throat> find the mean absolute deviation for each set of data. Okay, so first let's find the mean of those numbers. So we got to do that first, okay? So and we're going to round it to, we're going to get decimal. So hopefully everybody has calculators. So add up, there's 10 numbers there. Add them up and divide by 10. Okay, and I'm just saving some time right there. And we get uh, 591 uh, divided by 10, which is 59.1. So to the nearest um, uh, whole number, it goes going to be 59. Okay, so we're going to use that as our mean. Okay, so now what we're going to do is is uh, complete this table. Okay, so this is going to be the distance from the mean. Okay, so each number, how, how far is 60 away from 59? It's 1, okay? So we're going to do 60 minus 59 equals 1. And we always do absolute values because distance is always positive right there. Okay, so 58 minus 59, okay? 58 minus 59 is negative 1, but we want to do the absolute value to keep it positive. So that's going to be positive 1 right there. Okay, 54 minus 59. 54 minus 59 is negative 5, but the absolute value is positive 5, okay? So we just keep doing that and doing that for all of those, and those are all the distances from the mean, okay? And then now we just find the mean of those numbers right there, and that will be our MAD right there, our mean absolute deviation right there, okay? So it's the mean distance, mean of the distances between the data values and the mean of the data. Does that make sense? So now let's calculate the MAD by finding the mean of that second row right there. So we're going to add up all of those numbers and divide by 10. And that tells us our, our MAD, well, 27 divided by 10 is 2.7, so we're close to 3. Okay, so our MAD is close to 3. Now keep in mind, so we're going to do another one with City B. Okay, here's City B. So let's find first find the mean of those numbers. So add those up and divide by 9 in this case right here. So that comes close to 50, okay? So now we're going to find the distances from the mean, okay? So so I'm going to do 46 minus 50 is negative 4, but the absolute value of negative 4 is going to be positive 4. 47 minus 50, absolute value of 56 minus 50, absolute value. And there's all the rest of them. And then we find the mean of those numbers, okay? So let's go ahead and calculate those right there. Add those up and divide by 9, and we get about 4. Now the other one was 3. So, if I go too fast, you guys, I'm sorry. So we just add them all up and, and divide by four, divide by nine, and it comes to about four right there. So compare those two MADs. How do the MADs, the mean absolute deviations, describe the distribution of the heights in each group? Well, the MAD in A was three, the MAD in B was four. So since um, uh, the MAD in B is greater, then the mean of the heights in B are more spread out from the mean than those in A. Okay, it just means those numbers are more spread out away from their mean. Okay, just means that they're, they're just spread out just a little bit more. All right, so the mean absolute deviation can be used to answer statistical questions in real world type problems. 
So many of these uh, questions have implications for operations of businesses. So, so I mean, if you're doing some statistical analysis of stuff that costs you millions and millions of dollars, you want that MAD to be as low as possible so it could be more accurate of the data right there, okay? All right, I'll move this up too. Don't worry about that. Some of you guys can't see that bottom part. So a chicken farmer wants her chickens to have all of the same weight. She's trying two types of, of feed. That should say feed right there. It's going to spread it out. Let's see. Feed, not fet. E. Oops, let me back up. Feed uh, to see which type produces the best results. Uh, uh, all the chickens in pen A are fed. Uh, premium growth feed and all the chickens in pen B are fed maximum growth feed. Okay, those are made up names, I'm pretty sure. Maybe not. <laughs> so the farmer uh, wants to record the weights of the chickens in each pen in the tables below. So, um, uh, well, she does record them, doesn't want to, she records them. So, which chicken feed produces less variability in weight? Okay, so let's just look at these right here. Oh, let me just slide that up and I'll clean that. Uh, that fet out, that should be feed, sorry. Uh, okay, and then, um, uh, let's see. <clears throat> so, so uh, this is 5.8 uh, pounds. I'm looking at this, 5.8, and it says pounds right here, 6.1 pounds. Okay, so we're going to first find the average of all those numbers. Hopefully we all have a calculator right there. Find the average of all those numbers. Then we'll find the distances from their mean right there, okay? So when we do that, find the mean weight in each pin, okay? So so let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and add them up and divide by 10. And just to save some time, I'm sure you guys can do this. I'm just saving some time. So all I did is I punched all of these in a calculator, divided by 10, similarly with this one. And then uh, it's closest to about 6.3 and 6.7. Those are the means of those weights of those chickens in pen A and pen B. Okay, so now what we're going to do is find the distances from the means for the weights in each pen. Okay, so before we do deal with the decimals, just think of 58. 58 minus 63 is negative 5. So 5.8 minus 6.3 is going to be negative 0.5. But distances from that is going to be a positive 0.5. So I'm just saving time. I'm doing each number minus the mean absolute value. Okay, so there it is right there. Okay, similarly, we're going to do that with this guy right here. 7.7 .7 minus 6.7 .7 is going to be 1.0. 7.4 minus 6.7 is going to be 0.7 and so on. So that's going to get us all of those numbers right there. And then we find the mean of those distances from the mean. Okay, so here we go. Let's calculate the math for each pin. Okay, so now I'm just... All I'm doing is adding up all of these numbers now divided by 10 and all of these numbers divided by 10. And the bigger MAD that the pins have, the more variability that they have. And I think that's something that we want less of in this case. Okay, so here we go. So I get about 0.5 and 1.0. Okay, so, so what that means is since pin A's MAD is less, premium growth feed produces less variability in weight of that. Okay. All right, you guys, you can do this. All right, take care.